Take your burdens and your cares and leave them at the foot of the cross. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. Take your Bible if you would. Turn to 1 Peter. Please, 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 please. Turn to 1 Peter. Let's neither dilly nor dally. Let's get on with it. Amen. 1 Peter chapter 1. We talked about the fiery trial and uh, all the things that pertain to that. And uh, let's move on a little bit past that. Uh, I don't, I don't want to scare people with the idea that we may suffer things for the cause of Christ. Uh, it's one thing to talk about it, to think about it, to see it in the Bible. It might be another thing to experience it. But uh, wh whatever it is that you go through, whatever it is that I go through in life, whatever it is that God has appointed us to go through, and I think that's an important Part of it is that whatever we go, whatever way uh, we have, whatever path we have in life, God has chosen that path for us. I believe that. I sure do. And uh, if God didn't think we could handle it, we wouldn't be going down that road. If God didn't think that by leading us and taking us by the hand that uh, we weren't going to make it, even with his help, then we wouldn't be going down that road. So I believe in that. I believe that we will have a trial of our faith. I've talked about that. But I also believe that at the end of that trial, we will come out victorious and we will see the end of our faith. So in 1 Peter chapter 1, let's, uh, let's go back to verse 5. That way we get the whole context of it here. Uh, we are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. But you think about your salvation, all right? Think about the day that God saved you. What was the purpose of it? Was it to give you health and better finances? Was it to give you the easy way of life? No, but every dime that you've got, every dime that's ever run through your hand, that's been by the grace of God, amen? Everything that God has blessed you with has been just that. It's been an extra blessing on top of what he's promised you. And the day that you got saved, you got saved for a reason. It wasn't for the paycheck. It wasn't for the kidney disease or whatever it was. You got saved because you realized you were a sinner. You realized that God's judgment and God's wrath was against you and, and going to be on you. And you did not want to go to hell when you died. You wanted to go to heaven. You wanted to have eternal life. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a great... Um, uh, what am I trying to say here? It's a great way to sell the gospel. Tell them about the wrath of God. Amen. Tell people about the, the they're lost and they're going to go to hell and they need God's grace. And so anyway, so we're kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. The greatest thing that God does for you has yet to be revealed. And I want you to keep that in mind. I... I have believed this for a long time, and I still believe it. The greatest days of the church of Jesus Christ are not behind us. They are ahead of us. And I believe that. I really do. Because if I didn't believe that, what good would it be for us to just keep doing this? Because we hear, you know, we hear old people talk about the old days, hear them talk about how they used to have revival services that lasted all week, maybe two weeks, and how people got saved and how the bars closed down and this and that and the other, how it really made a change in the community and so on. And I don't mind hearing stories like that, I really don't. But those days are gone. I'll never see anything like that with my eyes. I just like to think that there's something better down the road that God has waiting for all of us. Can I hear you say amen? amen? Okay? So I just, that's what I believe. Ready to be revealed. The greatest thing, the greatest work that God's going to work in your life is ahead of you and it's not behind you. So he says, verse 6, Wherein you greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, you are in heaviness through manifold temptations. Many. is in that word manifold. Many temptations. That the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, 
though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Have you ever thought about that? I'm sure you have. You thought about the appearing of Jesus. Maybe tell us what you think it's going to be like. Anybody want to do that? What do you think the appearing of Jesus is going to be like? Okay, Ryan. No, Derek got a story. I know he does because we talked about it before. Let's hear it. All right, Ryan, you're the one to open your mouth, so let's hear it. Well, I don't know. I was driving down the road the other day, and I was just kind of thinking about that. But I, I don't know. I just, I just, I don't even think. Well, that must have been some great story, you hadn't it? I don't think I can really put it into words. Do you think it's going to be glorious? Yes. Amen. Yes, Alicia. Now, I like what you said, because that's biblical. The day of the Lord is the day of darkness. Okay? Starts out that way. But then, the glory of the Lord is revealed. And I talked about that, um, I think, I can't remember which one it was. I do so many things sometimes, I can't remember which one it was. But I talked about, I think I mentioned today on Pastor Mike Online, Matthew. Matthew used to have this thing when he was little, when he would see the sun poking through clouds off in the distance. You'd see those rays coming down from clouds. And Matthew would say, Mom, that's God's power, isn't it? That's God's power up there. That's God's power. And I'd be going, yeah, that's not bad. It's pretty good. I don't know where he heard it from, but that's pretty good. You know, that's God's power. And I think... That the day of the Lord starts out as a day of darkness, thick clouds, a day of gloominess. And I think just when it can't get any worse, I think the glory of the Lord appears in the clouds. And it's the brightest thing, shining brighter than the sun itself. Amen. Because Christ is the son of righteousness, rising with healing in his wings. And I think the shout could very well be from God's people going, Woo! Amen. Only like 20 billion times louder than that. Amen. I was watching, I like to watch fireworks displays. Big ones. Where they spend a lot of money on it. And I like to sit up close because I like that boom. I like that feel, that feeling, that sound. And it just makes me happy. It makes me giddy. I like it. And I was sitting there last night watching the fireworks going off going, whoo, 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 look at that. Can you imagine the firework of Jesus peering in the clouds with a shout? Amen. Yeah. Amen. Found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ, whom, having not seen, ye love. I've never seen him. But I love him. He's my pen pal. I talk to him. And he talks back to me. And one of these days, I'm going to see him. You see, whom having not seen, but I know for a fact that the first time I see him, I'm going to know who he is. And it, I won't be looking at the man of sin, the son of perdition, who pretends to be God. I'll be looking at God himself, Jesus Christ, and I'll go, that's Jesus Christ. That's unmistakable. Amen? Yeah, you know the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Yeah. Uh, was it King Nebuchadnezzar? Nebuchadnezzar knew who that was. Yeah. Now, let me tell you, let me tell you a little story about that. You see, the defenders of these false Bibles, they love to look at that and say, well, because these other Bibles say a son of the gods. And these false Bible promoters, they all say the same thing. Well, I mean, Nebuchadnezzar, he was a pagan. And 
he was looking at that and using the only language that he was associated with, and that is a son of the gods. And I'm just going, I don't buy it for a second. There is no way in the world that you're going to look at the son of God and go, I don't know who that is. Anton LaVey, the founder of the First Church of Satan, I guarantee you when he sucked in his last gurgling breath and then went and stood before the Lamb and the throne of God, I guarantee you he was going, uh-oh, boy did I get it wrong. Amen. Amen. Amen? Whom having not seen you love, in whom though now you see him not, yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. See, that's where we get that song. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. Verse 9 then, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. Now here's, here's where I'm going tonight. Make sure that the end of your faith matches the end of your life. You ever had one of those months where the end of the money came before the end of the month? You ever had one of those? Especially some of you who get paid at only one time a month. Get paid at the first of the month and then you got to suck it up through the rest of the month. I mean that first, first week of the month, I mean you, you got money. Then you get to the 28th and the 29th and the 30th and you're not sure how you're going to get there. I have literally, I remember I used to drive back and forth from McAllister, Oklahoma to Moore, Oklahoma. When I was in Bible college, I was working at a church and I'd go down there on weekends and I would come back with a, with a check from the church because I worked there. $150 a week they paid me and I would drive there and back. And on my way back, I remember one time I was halfway home and I was looking at my gas tank and all I had was a check. And I had no way of cashing it. And I had no cash. And I watched that gas tank and I went, I'm not going to make it back home. There's no way in the world. And I literally prayed that car into that parking lot of where I was staying just off campus. And every time I'd look down at the gas tank, I'd, I'd freak out because I'm going, I'm going to run out of gas any second. And I had this little picture of Jesus. And I know this is probably idolatry. But anyway, I had this little picture of Jesus there in my car. And I shoved it over, right over the, where the gas tank thing is. So I wouldn't see the gas tank. I'd just see Jesus. And I was just praying, Lord, get me home. Lord, get me home. And I ain't kidding you. That thing must have been out of gas. It's like God making new gas in my gas tank. I mean, I don't know how it did it. Okay. But anyway, here's, here's what I'm getting. Make sure that the end of your faith coincides with the end of your life. Do not let your faith stop or run out or quit before it's time. One of these days, we won't need faith anymore. We'll have sight. We'll see what it is that we hope for. But we don't, we're not there yet. And I know sometimes mentally, emotionally, it gets hard to live the way God wants us to live. Our flesh battles us and fights us and works on us and tries to kill us spiritually. And it's hard. I'm telling you, there's great reward for those whose faith will continue. I didn't say works. I didn't say, now keep obeying the Ten Commandments now and you might make it at the end. I'm telling you, make sure your trust in what God said hangs on until the very end. Amen? That's the end of your receiving. See, you're going to receive the end of your faith one way or the other. Because some people start out with a little bit of belief, but it doesn't last very long. And they stop. They just give up. They quit believing. They're going to receive the end of that 
at the end, it's not going to be good. And I got, I got a story to show you in the Bible. Okay? Receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. Turn to John chapter 8. John chapter 8. You hurry up and turn there and I'll hurry up and preach. John chapter 8 verse 30. As he spake these words, many believed on him. Now I'm going to tell you something. We are living in a world right now where many start out believing on him. But then many don't end up that way. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. See that make you free part right there? That's the end of your faith that Peter was talking about. We will get the results of our life of faith at the end. We will be free. Free of this world, free of this bondage of corruption that we're in, free of all of this stuff that we're going through. Bonnie and Roy, you guys have been on my mind now for several days. I've just been praying for you guys and what you're going through. Other people in this church are going through some tough times. And I've, this has been on my heart heavy and I've been praying for them. And I'm just saying, Lord, please help them. Lord, guide them. Lord, bless them. Lord, give them your grace. God, heal them. Do something in them. One of these days, we're going to be free. From all this stuff that we got to put up with down here. And our Savior knows what kind of stuff we put up with because He had to deal with it too. Amen? He endured it. And so we endure it. And one of these days, if we continue in His Word, we will be free. Amen! And you guys know me. I mean, I, I, I believe that if you are born again, you are sealed until the day of redemption. Amen. But there are always those people who start out, go a little ways, and stop. John said they went out from us because they were not of us. Okay? They were not of us. Their faith, the end of their faith, didn't meet the end of their life. And they stopped. You know what they said? Let's go back to Egypt. Okay? Romans chapter 11, turn there. Romans 11, verse 18. Boast not against the branches. I love Romans 11. Romans 11 tells you straight out God's going to save Israel. They were the first ones on that tree. Amen. There's still room for them. God still got room for them. Boast not against the branches. But if thou boast, thou bearest not the root, but the root thee. You're not the root. You're not the core of it. Christ is. Thou wilt say then, the branches were broken off that I might be grafted in. Well, because of unbelief, they were broken off. And thou standest by faith. Be not high-minded, but fear. I have run into an awful lot of high-minded church people. And I'll say this. Usually the conservatives are the worst of it. Us conservatives, us fundamentals, if we're not careful, we get high-minded. We forget, we forget that this building is a hospital for sick people. We forget that this is the leper colony. We forget that. And we start looking down our nose at people that need to be here because this is a hospital for sinners. Amen? And we get high-minded and we think that we can't be touched. We can't be overcome. Nothing can happen to us. We get high minded. But be not high, not high minded but fear. For if God spared not the natural branches. The natural branches were the Jews. Take heed. Lest 
he spare, he also spare not thee. Behold therefore the goodness and severity of God, both of them. On them which fell, severity. But toward thee, goodness, there's that if again. If thou continue in his goodness. If thou continue in his goodness. Otherwise, thou also shalt be cut off. I can't even preach that verse better than what it says. It says it. Amen? And we have to believe it. Otherwise, thou also shalt be cut off. And they also, if they abide not still in unbelief, it means that if one day a Jew wakes up and says, I believe Jesus is the Messiah, they shall be grafted in. For God is able to graft them in again. And it's going to happen. It is going to happen. They're going to receive their sight. They're going to be raised back from the dead. They're going to see behind the veil. They're going to be given the new covenant that Jeremiah promised. They're going to see things they never saw before. And I believe that God is going to use the Gentiles to help them in with that. What a ministry that is. Somebody say, Jesus, oh, God is going to let you help Jesus brethren. To be saved. Did you ever read? I think it's in John. I may be wrong. Where you know Joseph and Mary had other children. You know that don't you? Mary did not remain a perpetual virgin for all of eternity. She had other children by Joseph. Amen? Did you know that they did not believe? They had a hard time with Jesus. You see that. James we see. James the half brother of Jesus. We know that he was in, but the other brethren of Jesus, they actually mocked Jesus. I think it was at the Feast of Tabernacles. They mocked him. They didn't believe in him. They had a hard time with it. Okay? God is going to allow the Gentile church to be part of bringing in the brethren of Jesus Christ. He weeps for his own people. Amen? Wow, what a ministry. But if thou continue in his goodness, otherwise thou also shalt be cut off. And again, I want to receive the end of my faith at the end of my life. I want my faith to continue all the way. I don't want anybody questioning whether or not I'm in heaven. Amen. Oh, but you're Pastor Mike. You Don't put me up there. I know the promises of God. I know the blessings of God. I know the salvation of God. I get it. But it's not good for some of us to think that we can just get away with anything that we want to. And everything will still be okay. That's not good for a lot of people to think that way. Amen? Colossians chapter 1. Turn there. Colossians chapter 1, verse 21. And you that were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works. Let me stop right here. You know what wicked works do? They make you enemies in your mind to God. Don't they? Because see, wicked works always feel really good. Why did they legalize marijuana in Nevada? Apparently, it makes you feel really good. I've never smoked it, never been high from it. But apparently, marijuana makes you feel really good. Bourbon does too. Okay? It makes you feel smooth. Right? I've never smoked. People that smoke say, it just makes you feel good. <laughs> Until you're 70. Okay. Um, there's lots of other things that feel really good. Curse words. 
curse words feel good when you say them. Okay? And there are no replacements for curse words for some reason. You can say a lot of other words and they don't feel as good. Curse words feel good. But they see that's just it though. The Bible talked about Moses refusing the pleasures of sin for a season. Because sin does have a pleasure to it for a season. But then the payback is terrible. Amen? And I'm just saying, wicked works somehow makes your mind an enemy toward God. Because the feelings and the highs of sin start working in your mind. And you start thinking about having that feeling again and more of that feeling again and more of that feeling again. And then when somebody brings up God or when the Holy Spirit starts working on you, all of a sudden you're hateful to God because of the sin. Catch yourself in that position. If I were you, I would get down on my knees and cry out to God saying, God, deliver me from this. This is wickedness. Amen? See, I'm talking to church people. I'm talking to church people who know about sin. So, that you were sometime alienated enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now hath he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. If ye continue in the faith, grounded and settled and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel which ye have heard which was preached to every creature which is under heaven whereof I Paul am made a minister you see I, I, I am I think it's wise to believe and to preach and to teach to people that those who enter into heaven continued they kept going. They didn't stop. They didn't get out. They didn't want to turn around. Okay? Go to the book of Numbers, chapter 14. Turn there. In fact, yeah, Numbers 14. Charge. You've been in a few sword drills, haven't you, Ryan? More than one. Yeah. Let me give you the background in Numbers 14. Walk circumspectly. The background is chapter 13 and the giants. And the 12 spies went in to spy out the land. And they brought back the cluster of grapes on a big pole between two men carried on their shoulders. That's impressive. That is some monster grapes, okay? They come bringing that back. They brought back pomegranates and figs and all that other good stuff. And they brought back a story. A story of giants, of walled villages where the walls were tremendously high, where the men were of great stature, the sons of Anak, where apparently... They look like grasshoppers to the giants, and the giants considered them grasshoppers. That's how they were able to walk through the land. What is it? Oh, it's a, just a grasshopper. They didn't know it was a Jew. Hey, <laughs> never seen one before. Anyway, they walk through that whole land, and they come back, and ten of them. Remember, that's the law, right? The law. Ten of them said, we can't go. We can't go. We, we'll never make it. We'll never get past those giants. Can't do it. And I'm going to tell you something. Your wicked works will tell you just that, won't they? They'll tell you that, every, and the devil will tell you that every time that you're not going to make it. So, chapter 14, and all the congregation lifted up their voice and cried, and the people wept that night. All the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron. And the whole congregation said unto them, Would God that we had died in the land of Egypt 
Well, would God we had died in, the, in this wilderness. And wherefore hath the Lord brought us into this land to fall by the sword, that our wives and our children should be a prey. Were it not better for us to return into Egypt? Don't tell me you hadn't thought it. Verse 4, And they said one to another, Let us make a captain and let us return into Egypt. You see, where, where he was talking about here, be not moved away from the hope of the gospel. These people got moved away from the hope of the gospel. Here is Joshua and Caleb. The Bible said, chapter 14, you read it. The Bible says that he had a different spirit in him. His spirit was saying to him, we can go. We can go. We can go in. God's going to give us a land. We're going to walk up and the giants are going to fall down dead. Or God's going to do something, but God's going to give us that land. Two of them saying we can go in. The rest of them saying, no, we can't. And the children of Israel, all, and look at your Bible. Look at your, where did it say that? Verse 2, all the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron. How many of them? All of them did. The ratio between those who go to heaven and those who don't is just like this. Many are going to fall away. Few that there be that find a straight and narrow road. Are you one of the few? Pray about that. Amen? Pray about it. Get that Get that knowledge in your mind from God, from His Word. God's saying to you, trust what I said. Trust my Word. When, when your mind starts getting alienated because of your wicked works, get in the Word and let God deal with you. Let God teach you. Let God chasten you. Let God plow up fallow ground in your mind. Whatever it takes. Let God put it back in you. You can go in. Amen. Make sure the faith, the end of your faith, meets up with the end of your life. Make sure on your last breath, you're saying, Lord, here I come. Have mercy on me. Amen? Amen. Something, anything that's directed toward God. That's what I want. I want my last breath. Listen, I've been here before. I've been with my last breath calling upon God. I've been there. Okay? I've told God every time, God, the next time you do it for real, I want to know. I want to know like some of these men in our church. Knew. I want to know... I could talk about that. Mm. Jamie Carmichael knew. Keith. That man knew. That's why he moved her down here. That's why he moved her down here. I don't know if y'all know that. He knew before they even moved. And he brought her down here so we could take care of her. What a God. Amen. Amen. Turn to 2 Timothy chapter 3. Second Timothy chapter 3 verse 12. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But... Continue thou. Continue thou. In the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of. Notice the hast learned and hast been assured of is past tense. At one time you knew it. At one time you were assured of it. I want to ask you tonight, are you still assured? Do you still know it? Because believe it or not, there could be somebody sitting here. There could be somebody on the other end of that camera that right now is not sure. Okay? And God wanted you listening or watching or whatever to help you with that assurance. Okay? 
God wants to help you with that. He's not the enemy here. Okay? Continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom how thou hast learned them, and that from a child thou hast known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make thee wise in the salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. And I like this. Because in this context right here, I grew up knowing the Holy Scriptures. I knew they were holy. The, the scholars took that out of me for a season. God put it back in. Amen. And when God put it back in, it's there. It's nailed shut. It's over with. It's done. I'm not crawling back to that hole that I was in back then. I'm not going back. Never. Okay? And so I'm back where I was when I was a child here. I, I know the scriptures are holy. Okay? Get that kind of assurance in you. Have it nailed down. Have it tight. Amen? Uh, Hebrews chapter 3. Turn there. I'm going to let you go here in a little bit. I don't have too much more to say on this. I want to finish this out. I'll go ahead and tell you. Sweetie Pie, it's our 30th anniversary next week. Can we go on vacation? For a few days. Okay? Just a few days. It'll be a Wednesday. We'll be gone next Wednesday. My daughter's saying no. You wouldn't be here if it hadn't been for the first anniversary. I'm telling you that. Okay? <laughs> Hebrews chapter 3. But Christ as a son over his own house, whose house are we if... There's that if again. If we hold fast the confidence. Confidence is a word. It has con in it. It means with. Fide is faith. Fidelity. If we hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope firm, how long? The end of your faith holding fast to the end of your life. See it there? Is it there? Am I right? Is, is what I'm saying to you correct according to scriptures? Hebrews 3, 16. For some, when they heard, did provoke. Howbeit not all that came out of Egypt by Moses, but with whom was he grieved forty years? Was it not with them that had sinned, whose carcasses fell in the wilderness, and to whom swear he that they should not enter into his rest, but to them that believed not? See, they believed Moses... As they walked out of Egypt. But they didn't just walk out of Egypt. Into the promised land the next day. They walked out. They spent a year. And they got to a point where they said. We're going back to Egypt. I don't know how they figured they was going to get back across that Red Sea. Because I'm pretty sure God wasn't going to open it. And if God did open it back, I would not have stepped in it under that condition. Amen. I uh, know I see Pharaoh's bodies down there. Ain't no way I'm going down there. Okay. But anyway, was it not with them who's, who's, that is said, his carcasses fell in the wilderness. And to whom swear he that they should not enter into his rest, but to them that believed not. So we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. It had nothing to do with the sacrifices they were making in the wilderness. It had nothing to do with animal sacrifices. That didn't take away their sin. All that was was a foreshadow of heavenly things. The cross, and Christ, and Calvary, and His blood, and so on. That's all that was. It was not their ritualism of doing the works. It was their belief. And they were doing the rituals, but didn't believe. It's possible. Is it not possible... To do the rituals without believing and trusting in God. People are doing it every day. Hebrews 8. For finding, verse 8. Hebrews 8, 8. For finding fault with them, he saith, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of... Look at this. 
God actually took Israel by the hand and was leading them. And then they pulled back and they said, we're going back. Because they continued not in my covenant. And I regarded them not, saith the Lord. We have now the new covenant. New contract, Wayne. Okay? God offers eternal life upon one condition. That you believe what God said. You trust what God said. You believe it against everything in the world. You have hope. Against hope. Like Abraham. Believed in hope. Against hope. And he staggered not at the promises of God. Okay? That's, that's the condition that God lays out for you. Is that you just believe what he said. It's a contract. It's a very simple contract. They can. It's not God that breaks the covenant. God never broke a covenant. Israel did, and some church people are, because they continued not. The end of their faith did not meet the end. Of their life. James 125. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein. He being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. Who in here wants to be blessed with heaven? Amen. Amen. It's not enough to just look at the Bible. You must continue. In the Bible. 1 John 2.19. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us. See, that's it right there. That's, that's what I'm saying. We're saved. Born again. And go to heaven. Because we did continue. But we continued. Because we're saved and born again. It doubles back on itself. Somehow. Okay? When I get to heaven, I'll understand it better. But the people who don't continue, salvation meant nothing to them. They traded it in. They went back to Egypt. They did not continue. And, and apparently, they were not of us. Because had they been of us, they would have no doubt have continued with us. They would still be here. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. You see, God always separates them out, doesn't he? The shepherd always separates the sheep from the goats. Because apparently, at one time, the goats and the sheep were all in the same flock. Right? And then Jesus said, you guys over here, you guys over here. I'm not the one and you're not the one that does that for anybody. That's God's job. Let him do it. Amen. It is not our job to tell. Well, obviously you're not saved. Obviously you're apostate. That's not our job. Okay. That's, that's the job of the shepherd. One more. First John. Turn there. Boy, I like this new app. 1 John chapter 2, verse 18. Little children, it is the last time, and as you have heard, that Antichrist shall come. Even now there are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. Now here's the greater context of that. Verse 20. But ye have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. I have not written unto you because you know not the truth, but because you know it, and that no lie is of the truth. Who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? He is Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. Catch that? They have not the Father. It means God is not their Father, and they are not His Son. Because they deny 
the Son, the Jesus Christ. But he that acknowledgeth the Son hath the Father also. Let that therefore abide in you, continuing with you, which ye have heard from the beginning. If that which ye have heard from the beginning shall remain in you, ye also shall continue in the Son and in the Father. You see how it works? If this continues in you, I mean, think, here's what I'm saying. If this continues in you, you will continue in it. And if you will continue in it, it will continue in you. And if it continues in you, then obviously you're continuing. Never mind. You get it, right? You understand it as well as I do. It looks like this. Okay? Who am I preaching this to? I have no idea. Somebody, somebody here, somebody out there, you're struggling. Okay? You're struggling. Wicked works has made your mind an enemy to God. Okay? So let God, number one, drive the, in, drive the wicked works out. And He will. Okay? And then get in, get in here. Get in here. Because you being in here is the sign that this is in you. Okay, that's the sign. And I, I'm just telling you, as all the churches walk away from the Word of God, God is making them manifest who they are. Because I, I'm telling you, the churches that are walking away from this, they're marrying gay people. Right and left. That's where they're, if they're not doing it today, they're going to be doing it five years from now. And that, that's just how it works. Let's stand to our feet. I'll be on my soapbox all night. If you just want to know who I am, what I believe, and what I stand for, I stand for staying in. Okay? Stay in. Don't let the devil talk you out of it. Yes, Roy. Are you keeping on a chorus with Psalm 61? Psalm 61. Hear my cry, O God, attend unto my prayer. From the end of the earth will I cry unto thee. When my heart is overwhelmed. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I, for thou hast been a shelter for me, a strong tower from the enemy. I will abide in thy tabernacle forever. I will trust in the covert of thy wings, Selah. For thou, O God, hast heard my vows. Thou hast given me the heritage of those that fear thy name. Thou wilt prolong the king's life and his years as many generations. He shall abide before God forever. O prepare mercy and truth, which may preserve. Him. That's what I was saying. Truth Amen. preserves you. So will I sing praise unto thy name forever that I may daily perform my vows. Roy, thank you for that. Father in heaven, bless your word. Father, this Bible says it better than me. I get it messed up. I don't know that I have it down 100%. But your word says it very, very clear. Lord, help us. Lord, if there's somebody listening to this that's hurting, that's struggling, not sure they're going to make it, God, their faith is on trial. That's what I see. They're going through the fiery trial, and their faith is what's on trial. And I pray, Heavenly Father, that their faith would make it to the end. And they'd come out victorious because the glory that awaits us on the other side of that is so much more better than the trial that we went through. Father, teach us that. You build, us, build in us that hope. And Lord, let it just, if it just helps us just continue one more day, 
then do it again the next day so that we continue one more day. Because God, that's all you said that we had was just today. Father, this is the end of the day. And we thank you, God, for preserving us and teaching us, Lord, these things as we continue another day. The Father, tomorrow, give us tomorrow. And the next day, the same. And Lord, preserve us and preserve your word in us that we know that we'll continue on. Bless this word tonight. Make it clear in the ears of those who trusted in Jesus' name and all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. I love you. God bless you.